It's definitely in our best interest to convince the rest of the world to do something about climate change. And I think the way that we do that is to be a leader. To be a leader in alternative energies. To be a leader in education. To be a leader in producing problem solvers for the rest of the world. Um, and I think we can do that. I think it's, it's, a, it's a moral obligation. It is our obligation. It's our generation's obligation to do that. I think every generation faces fantastic challenges. This is ours. Sustainability is our challenge. You can never underestimate the power of a small project addressing the basic needs of a small community. I'm from a little town of Ray, Colorado. It was an old railroad town. In the 70s, Yuma County, Colorado was the largest corn producing county in the nation. As we were watching our town struggle from one that had been one full of vibrant young families and children, the one that was starting to morph itself into something more of a retirement village, what is a struggle for the thousands of towns like Ray across the entire Central Great Plains. A small community of 2,000 people who understand that we need to transition to something very different than, than, than what we're doing. And how do you lead? We're going to lead with a, in this case, a small step, a school-owned wind turbine that will exist for the benefit of the community and the school district. To the extent it could be, this is about the kids and about the kids understanding their relationship to their surroundings and what, what the wind meant. You know, those of us who have been in agriculture all of our lives have cussed the wind, <laughs> with the exception of being able to turn the windmills to, to water our cattle. But for, for, for the most part, you know, the dry, dusty plains ha has never fully captured the economic opportunities with wind. My name is Ron Howard. I'm the superintendent of schools in Ray, Colorado. Both Kansas and Nebraska are six miles from us. Because of uh, energy cost and uh, deficit spent budget, for our school district, they decided to come up with an innovative way to maybe offset some electrical costs. So they decided maybe they could do something with a wind turbine. A school district hadn't owned a turbine of this size before. This is about a $2 million project. And so we rallied the community, uh, endowments, foundations, individual pledges. Yeah. We see really big things for this. We projected somewhere between two and a half and three million kilowatts of, of power should be produced from this 900 kilowatt turbine. Our agreement with the city will provide approximately $80,000 to our electricity costs in the school district. I think it's a really neat opportunity, not only for money, but uh, for the educational process. Our students have all been out here from kindergarten through eighth grade and had tours. We've implemented it uh, into our science programs. And with students, it's all about, uh, you know, providing an, an education. And if you can provide one that's uh, hands-on, like this is, what a benefit for kids to be able to express you don't have to use carbon, you don't have to use oil, and we can still sustain our livelihood as it is. People are extremely proud of it, and uh, it's been a great addition to our, our community and our school. What it has done is, is changed the conversation at the state level. Now that the school district is thought out of the box, that's going to let a community think out of the box, or a farmer think out of the box, or our state think out of the box. A small step in demonstrating what we could do in a regional basis using school kids to lead the way. Look at how kids can start changing the debate about how we grow and consume food. Do we, do we need to have the average tomato travel 1,300 miles into our system? Probably not. You know, kids could solve this problem. My dad is growing shallow tomatoes that used to be zucchini and squash. The neighborhood is very supportive of environmental issues here yeah. in Park Hill. It's one of the most diverse 
um, neighborhoods in Denver. We're just so fortunate to have the Denver Urban Gardens here on site. Each classroom has its own plot, and a lot of the families have plots in the community garden. And they got this big. Wow, look at that. <laughs> they came up on their own. These kids are city kids. A lot of them had never seen radishes or zucchinis. They didn't even know what they were. So then for them to not only see them, but experience, you know, planting the little seed and watching it grow and then eating it and then collecting the seeds again and connecting that. Come on, guys. You want to save the seeds? Yeah, let's save the seeds. What I get really excited about, and the kids do too, is not only connecting that, but then also the, the waste, you know, with the compost pile and the recycling, and to really understand that circle of consumption and waste and how it's all connected together. And I see them making those connections, and they're talking about zero waste lunches. My fifth grade students are concerned about climate change. They're really concerned about the polar bears and the animals. I try to empower them to understand that there's choices that they make every day that make a difference. My students last spring created an ABC Reduce, Reuse, Recycle books, uh, picture book to, to present to the primary students to use to educate them about the recycling program here. So that's worked really well. The classrooms are, are really happy to have us come in and the kids love it. What you can recycle is things like glass bottles and jars or plastic bottles, aluminum. Tin. It hasn't taken a lot of time away from the classroom. The big projects that we've done fit perfectly with the literacy, with speaking and listening standards. It fit with technology because we did the PowerPoint and it fit with math because we actually did a trash analysis and they graphed the trash in the trash can. So it really fit across the curriculum with everything. I've had one parent who said that their, their kids were driving them crazy because they were constantly like, say, you can't throw that away and you shouldn't buy that, we can't recycle it. And then I also had kids who live in apartment buildings and they don't recycle for apartment buildings and so they want to bring their recycling to school. And um, so I said, sure, you know, you can bring it. Um, so yeah, a lot of connections with home and family. I'm very encouraged, particularly by school kids. It is going to be up to them to help us solve this problem. If we just keep empowering them to do that at the school level, well, we're going to do what we can do, but they can help shape this, shape this solution.